Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to uh, Coins, Rolls, and Varieties. Uh, JW here. Today we're going to be working on the, uh, the fourth episode of the second nickel box. Um, so far we have found two buffaloes, uh, four foreigns, one Lincoln, one dime, uh, about 10 pre-60s, -60, pre and then a, uh, a decent 62 that's possibly mint state. That's the uh, the best of the best so far. Oh, we've got a few uh, a few uh, double die reverses in the more modern um, years. So we're just going to jump right on in and see what we can find in the next ten. Do the same thing we did in the, uh, the last three videos. I'm just going to split them all here for you guys and uh, see if we can find silver. If not, pause it, go through them, and then recap together. <clears throat> So on the first roll, I'm not, I don't, not seeing any silver, but I'm gonna check this one, see if it's a buffalo. It isn't, okay. The buffaloes are really hard to tell just by looking at the edges. <clears throat> you can usually uh, spot the silver pretty easy, unless it's a uh, nicer one, and then it'll match the rest. Uh, thanks for watching, um, I genuinely appreciate it. see any darker edges in this one. Roll number three. Hopefully everybody's having a great day today. It's really hot where I'm at, so days are good as long as you don't have to be outside for very long. Um, not seeing any darker edges in that rule. Roll number four. See another form, so we have another uh, Mexican peso in here. Wow, this one is crazy. Never had this many in one box, so same as the, the previous three. Roll number five. seeing anything just by the edges here. Roll number six. And again, no darker edges. Roll number seven. Silver, roll number eight. Get those out of here. Nothing that's standing out, so perhaps maybe that one. So I'm gonna look, and it is not. It's, a, it's in the 70s. Roll number nine. Hopefully you. Can still see these uh, last two rolls. I'll try to put them up over there by the box. And just by the edges, I don't see anything. And roll number 10. And just by looking at the edges, I'm not seeing silver just right off the top, but maybe I'll find one after I go through them. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause it real quick and then I'm gonna go through these and see what, what's in here. All right, um, found a decent stack of uh, Philadelphias to go through here. Um, we have another uh, another foreign, one uh, peso of some kind, uh, two of those now out of these uh, next 10 rolls. So I am down, what is that, six nickels. Seven if you count that, uh, the penny, but I did get a dime and two buffaloes, so I'm gonna try to shake that one off. Um, I have seven here in the 60s, so I'm gonna look over these for uh, varieties, and then uh, if we have one, maybe we'll get it under the uh, microscope. <clears throat> um, I don't. I picked out one uh, nicer one that we can get a close up of if I can't find anything else. Uh, but that's it for these ten rolls. Um, just to kind of 
give a little little bit of a recap on what it is that I'm doing here. I'm looking for um, key dates that you know that generally have a, uh, a double die variety or a repunchment mark or something like something along those lines, or a die break. Um, die cuts, which is a uh, when a piece of the die breaks off of the um, breaks off and then they strike the coin anyways, and it, and a part of the uh, Part of the inner devices is missing. Um, that is what they call a die cut, and those are very popular as far as the Jeffersons go. And I'm looking for silver. I'm looking for buffaloes or anything, anything uh, pre buffalo as well. I mean, I think I've found one Liberty doing these before, but uh, that's what I'm going to be looking for. Also, you know, you can run into uh, coins that are struck on an incorrect planchet. So anything, anything that carries a premium above a nickel. So I'm going to look over these, and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, let's take a look at what we have. Uh, we do have three double dies here. Um, one is a possible. I got a uh, 2020 Philadelphia out of this box, which is nice. I think um, I think I may have only found one Philadelphia in the uh, 2020s or higher in the last one. Uh, we did get two pre-60s, so we'll take a look at those. Uh, we have the, uh, a 41. Very nice looking 41. Probably, I'd say, a fine. Yeah, with this uh, wear up here, I would probably give it a fine. It, it, might, it may uh, grab details with those scratches on it. But anyways, that's a uh, pre-60, so we want to keep those. And then a... Uh, 48 decent looking 48 there this one I would let's look at the reverse where I guesstimate it. it looks like it has a little bit of lamination right here possibly yeah that's that's probably exactly what that is yeah you can see it right here too a little bit of lamination on this one right here um, this one's uh, closer to VF I would say mid VF on this one. Looks original. Really cool with that lamination on the reverse. It's not too uh, dramatic, so. But but it's just a nice a nice keeper right here. Really good looking coin. Um, as far as the winner goes on the uh, the nicest uh, example is a uh, 2017. Really bright. Um, almost full luster, just a little, few little breaks up in there. The reverse really looks good. Look at that cartwheel on that thing. This is the nicest uh, example, except for that bag mark right up there. It's like a rim, took a rim hit. <clears throat> and I failed to mention that as well. I mean, personally, I'm also looking for any full step coins um pre-90 so anything pre-90 with all five steps i i look for those and um you know so anything that looks remotely mint state i always uh pull them out and uh check those uh steps immediately because there are quite a few of them out there that are worth a lot of money if you can find them with all five steps um <clears throat> so we'll get a look at these oh well i'll just let you know which ones they are this 2015 uh, Philadelphia, it is the uh, double die obverse. It's on the uh, the right the right side of his nose right there. So we'll look at that in the uh, microscope. Uh, it's the uh, DD01 as far as Variety Vista goes. And then both of these are also 2015 Philadelphias. These are the uh, DDR4. Does um, and they're very late die state, but um, I. Wanted to show the, uh, the nice little die chip inside the O of uh, Monticello there. I don't know if we'll be able to get us get to see that inside this mic microscope. It's in the top left corner. Um, it's almost completely um, completely gone after you know these are late die states. You know the end of the die is life. So so we'll get a look at these and see if we can get a you know look at those uh, the double dies on those. If not, then we'll just look at that those die chips inside the O's of Monticello. Oh, and then this uh, 2020 Philadelphia as well. When I, I see some extra thickness on the right side and the last L and O of um, Monticello. 
a um, little bit inside of the building details and um, a little bit off to the, the right side as well as, you know, you know, in those devices. So we'll just take a look at that. I don't know. I didn't see anything on 2020, but I, I might uh, double check all of the, uh, all the sites later. All right, let's take a look. All right, I have the first one in here. This is the uh, 2015 Philadelphia Double Diverse. Unfortunately, when I spin it around, I um, really can't get that this light to hit it on the right side to, in order for us to see that. And there were no die markers for this one on the site that I checked. Uh, maybe right here we can see it a little bit. And on the, uh, what is that, the... Uh, Right on the right side of his nose there, the very, this little, that darker area right there. That is the, uh, the doubling. You can see it really good with, uh, with my, um, watch repair glasses with the light. Um, you can see the, uh, th that extra little piece of nose right there. So this would be the, uh, DD-01 right here. And then let's take a look at the, uh, the first 2015 Philadelphia. I don't know if we'll be able to see it in the doorway there. But we'll be able to see the chip in the O. Uh, maybe just a tiny bit. Up there in that top left side of that doorway, up in the corner there, there's a, a little bit. You can see where it was. Um, not really good with this microscope here, but this die chip inside the O of Monticello was a, uh, one of the die markers for this variety. So. So the fact that I can see it a little bit, and then coupled with that uh, die marker, I know I know it was, or well, it is that variety, but <clears throat> I don't think it's gonna, you know, give this coin anything extra. Let's see, can we see it better on this one? Yeah, you can see it better in this one right here, in the top left side of that doorway in the corner. You see just that little bit coming down, and then also with the die chip inside the O of Monticello as well. So these are, uh, um, this one's a little beat up, but uh, it's still a nice find to find a, you know, a double die. They're fairly common on these 2015s, so. But if you can find a really nice um, example, it'd be, it's, it's a keeper, if you know what I mean. I'm going to throw this 2020 Philadelphia in here. Let's see if we can see what I'm talking about here. Uh, not too much, I guess. I can see what appears to be um, another L and another O on the last L and o, o, L and o of Monticello there. It's mostly on the right, the right side of these devices right here. Oh, not too much in the M and E Pluribus Unum. A little bit in the building details. So it might be a master die thing. I don't see anything in the doorway. But... Um, Yes, the last two letters of Monticello there. It looks to be like there's two, two, uh, an extra L and extra O over top of those last two letters. So I did not find a designation on Variety Vista, but I'll check the other ones. Um, otherwise, it's possibly just a master die uh, thing. So if not, I might hang on to it for a little while just to see if uh, any any other ones pop up. I'll pull that one out, and uh, that's it. That's what we found in these uh, ten rolls. All right, thanks for watching, and please uh, don't forget to uh, come back for the next one.